What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about shiny rates in Pokemon Go, how they work, let's get into it, timestamps below as always. So first thing very important to note is that everything I'm about to say in this video is gonna be all theoretical and not confirmed by Niantic. Unfortunately, Niantic does not tell us shiny rates. They don't go, shiny lit Leo is out, it has a one in 285 shiny rate. Like that's not something that happens. They're completely secretive with their shiny rates and everything I'm about to say in this video is based off community testing. So it could be 100% correct or it could be way off. It's just based off what data the community has. I also just want to give a huge credit to the Sylph Road and the people over there who make this video possible because they were able to collect all this data and come up with some theories. I'm going to link their website below and also their Reddit. You guys have to go check it out because everything I'm about to say in this video is what they have come up with and based off of all of their research. Okay, let's get into it. First thing is that not every Pokemon can be shiny in Pokemon Go and this is very important to know. Sometimes people come into my comment section and they're like, hey, I haven't gotten a shiny Numble yet. Like what's the shiny rate on that Pokemon? Well, the shiny rate is zero because shiny Numble is not available in Pokemon Go. Unfortunately, Pokemon Go shiny locks certain Pokemon, unlike the main series games, in which those shiny Pokemon are not available until they unlock it during special events. For example, during the event that just came out, we got the release of Shiny Lit Leo, which could not be shiny before, but now can be shiny in Pokemon Go through every type of encounter. If you want to find out what shiny Pokemon are available in Pokemon Go, I have a full video linked up here and linked below. You can check that out after. And then I also link some resources on how to find an updated list of all the shiny Pokemon as they release. Okay, now let's talk about shiny rates. Now what the Silf Road has found is that shiny rates are actually based on groups and not on specific Pokemon. For example, shiny rates don't work like, you know, we got shiny Torchic with a shiny rate of one in 84, and then we got shiny Magikarp, shiny rate of 538, and then shiny Shuckle has a shiny rate of 294. That's not how it works. Shiny rates are actually based on groups in which certain Pokemon are part of different groups based on their shiny rate rarity. For example, let's say, you know, Esper, Litleo, and Electrike are part of the full odd shiny group, which means they have the rarest shiny rate and they have a one in 600 shiny rate. Also something very important to note is that shiny rates are not based per encounter. I know a lot of people are like, oh, what are the shiny rates for um, a shuckle from a raid compared to a shuckle from an egg? Shiny rates per Pokemon are the same across the board. So if you have a shiny rate of one in 64 on a shiny onyx, no matter if you get that onyx from an egg, from a raid, from a research task in the wild or whatever, whatever, it's always going to have the same shiny rate across the board. This is very important to note because once you know the shiny rate of a Pokemon, you know the best way to encounter it and is one of the methods too expensive for you to shiny on. Okay, let's talk about those groups we talk about. Silf Road has able to identify five different shiny rate groups in Pokemon Go. The first one being a legendary slash mythical encounter, which has a shiny rate of around one in 20. Now it's very important to know when I say a shiny rate of one in 20 or any other shiny rate, I'm not saying that you do 20 legendary encounters and you're guaranteed to get a shiny. How shinies or RNG works in any game is it's based on luck per encounter. Take a dice, for example. Let's say this dice has 20 different sides. Every time I get an encounter, I'm going to roll that dice and hope that it lands on the shiny side. I could theoretically roll that dice a billion times and it never lands on the side that gives me the shine. That's just how RNG works in any game. You're never guaranteed to get a shiny after a certain amount of encounters. You just have a chance every encounter to get the shiny. The next shiny rate is going to be past community days, which has a shiny rate of around one in 25. Now it's very important to know when I say past community days, it's going to be during community day. So for example, you know, hop up community day, hop up will have a shiny rate of one in 25. However, once the community day is over, hop up does no longer have a shiny rate of 125 and it will fit into another group. So very important to note, community day shiny rates are only during the community day. We then have the perma boosted shiny rate, which we're going to talk about in a second, but that is a one in 64 shiny odds. Those are slightly boosted Pokemon. We then have a medium shiny rate, which has a one in 25 chance. And then finally, we have the base shiny rate, the full odds, you could say shiny rate, which is around one in 500 based off the self research. Group. So I'm going to link this website below. You guys can come check it out. But Silf Road has done an amazing job to kind of outline each Pokemon in each different group and show you all the data they've collected. So link below if you want to check this out. First thing to do is make sure you check include not available species. This will just, just make sure you check this. Now, first thing we see here is going to be current event and recent event. Silf does a great job of showing us if you're curious about the current event and the recent event, what the data they have so far and what are the shiny rates. Recent event is going to be the past event, which was the Kanto power plan event at the time of making this video. And we'll show you the shiny rate for those events. For example, we can see here, you know, the bag on two people got shinies out of 119 checks. So that leaves around a one in 60 shiny chance. We also have the current event if you want to check out any of this data, but I don't like to look at this data. Generally, I like to take a look down and take a look at the actual individual groups. First thing we're going to see here is going to be the legendaries. Of course, like I mentioned before, mythicals and legendaries through any type of encounter have a one in 20 shiny rate. The only time this does not apply is when that Pokemon cannot be shiny. For example, Zerud, which is a mythical you could get during a special event. That one did not have a shiny, so obviously no shiny rate. And then also when a shiny is guaranteed, there has been mythicals as the shiny Mew and the shiny Celebi, which has been guaranteed shiny. So obviously shiny 
shiny rates don't apply. But anytime a legendary or mythical has a shiny potential and you can get it in a raid, in a research or whatever, it has a one in 20 shiny rate. We then have a community day, of course, any Pokemon during the community days have the shiny rate, pretty self-explanatory. You'll see a lot of past community day Pokemon here. Then we have the perma boost. This is my favorite section. And these are gonna be shiny Pokemon that have a boosted shiny rate and are easier to get shinies up. You know, I know a lot of people have shiny Onyxes, shiny Phoebus, because these Pokemon are perma boosted shiny Pokemon. I mean, they have a one in 64 around shiny odds. These are the Pokemon I generally, if you want a shiny, I recommend hunting because these are not only generally common wild spawns or encounters and things like that, but also have a boosted rate. You're gonna see a lot of Alolan and Galarian Pokemon in here as well. You know, Alolan Raichu, Alolan Sandshrew, Alolan Vulpix, you know, a Lol a Galarian Ponita, Galarian Farfetch, you know, Galarian Zigzagoon. All these Galarian and Alolan Pokemon generally have a one in 64 shiny odds. They'll also show you the certainty of, based off their data, of what they think the shiny rate is. For example, here, Chansey has a 100% certainty based off of the uh, 41 out of 1,905 shiny. Like there's a lot of data here. So generally they're pretty certain this Pokemon. Something very important to note here is that shiny shadow Pokemon generally have a perma boosted shiny rate. You're gonna look in here, you're gonna see, you know, shiny shadow Growlithe, shiny shadow Grimer, shiny shadow Drowsy, shiny shadow Sneasel, shiny shadow Carvana. All these past shiny shadow Pokemon have this perma boosted shiny rate, which makes a lot of sense because, you know, it's not easy to get these encounters. So having this boosted shiny rate is amazing for us to get these shiny shadows. With this in mind, you can kind of think to the future because Niantic won't really change the shiny shadow rate per Pokemon. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. You can kind of think and be like, probably all of these new shiny shadows coming out are going to have this one in 64 shiny rate. We can look at Bagon, for example, during the current event, two people got shinies out of 119, which is around a one in 64 per week shiny rate. Of course, the Teddy Ursa is like zero out of seven. So like not a lot of data for these Pokemon, but you can still think to yourself, hey, if all the past shiny po shadow Pokemon have been perma boosted, most likely all these new ones are going to have this perma boosted shiny rate. Moving on to the next, we have the medium shiny rate. Now, I don't really know if this is actually an uh, actual thing. Silph Road does have it here, but there's only three Pokemon in this section. We have the Shinx, the Gibble, and the Melton, but Melton is currently not a available shiny Pokemon. It only gets released during the event. And same goes with the Smeargle, which is part of the perma boosted shiny section, only available during special events. But in here, we have the Shinx and the Gibble. Now, they do say it's a one in 25 chance. They do have a really good amount of checks here, like 14 out of 15, 57. And it's a good amount. But honestly, I would just say that these Pokemon are probably perma boosted. We just don't have the best data on them because I don't really know if Niantic would go ahead and make a separate slightly medium boosted shiny rate Pokemon. Like it might be a thing. This is just something to take with a grain of salt in my opinion. Finally, we have the base shiny odds. This is going to be any Pokemon you didn't see in the other sections are going to have this full odds in here. And this is generally just any Pokemon mostly during non-event hours are going to have this rate. You're going to see Snorlax in here, Larvitar, all these rare shinies. You know, you don't really see get a shiny that often in the wild. And that's because its shiny rate is so high. Finally, at the bottom, you're going to see the not enough data section. These are Pokemon that we just don't have enough data to kind of identify. But in here, you can still make some, you know, comparisons to other Pokemon and kind of identify shiny rates. For example, you're going to see, you know, Entei in here, which is a legendary. So most likely has a one in 20 shiny rate. And you're also going to see Galarian Pokemon in here, like Galarian Stunfisk and Darumaka, which most likely have a perma boosted shiny rate. You've seen all of these other Galarian and Alolan Pokemon in the perma boosted section. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense for Nyan to go ahead and just take another Galarian Pokemon and not give it a perma boost. So yeah, you can check out this website, check out all of these Pokemon. Again, make sure you have this little check mark. Now, all this data is community based. So I just want to say here, if you want to help the community and input your research, I'm going to link below this website. And this is where you can sign up and just input the data you have to help the researchers find more of this info. So if you have inf information on shiny rates, for example, you know, you checked 500 Lit Leos and you finally got a shiny on the 500th one, check out on this website. You can join in here. It just links you to a Discord and then you can join their Discord, join the Discord, all that stuff. And then inputting your data will help the community, help the research pinpoint more shiny rates. So if that's something you'd be interested in, I'm just going to link that below for anyone who would like to check that out. Final thing I'm going to link here is going to be another website called shinyrates.com. Now I'm not hundred percent sure where they get this data from, how legit this data is and all this stuff. It's a pretty sketchy website, but they do have data on this website as well. Again, take it with a grain of salt because I have no clue where it comes from, but in here they're going to have, you know, the Pokemon, the ID. So the Pokedex number, the name, the shiny rate, and then the sample size. This is based off how many they checked. I have no clue where they get this information. Might be bots, not hundred percent sure, but someone sent me this website and I thought I'd share it just in case. But in here, they're going to go ahead and show you um, shines of shiny rates they have based off Pokemon. And you can see similar trends here. You know, you're going to see the Charmander, the Bulbasaur, the Squirtle all have near one in 500 shiny rates. And then you're going to see the Charizard with a one in 85, the Venusaur with one in 45. This looks perma boosted, right? These Pokemon look like they're perma boosted shiny. Take Paris, for example, apparently they got 61,000 sample rate. I don't really know how legit this is, but one in 510. That's almost on the dot for a full odd shiny right there for the Paris. So you can come check this website if you want to check out some shiny rates. But again, take it with a grain of salt because some of them numbers are wacky. Like, you know, 
know here. They got 1,696 um, sample rate and they got one shiny out of it. So all of a sudden the shiny rate is one in, like that's just, you don't, you don't really want to look at those. So just make sure they have a big enough sample size. And that is pretty much it with the video guys. In the end, what I'm going to say is that to get more shinies guys, don't worry too much about shiny rates and just check more Pokemon. The best thing to do to get more shinies is to get your chance at that shiny more. Roll that dice more times like we talked about earlier. That's going to be the best way to get shinies. Generally, shiny rates are good to know if you want to kind of plan, hey, is this Pokemon worth hunting or not? Is its shiny rate too big? But in general, I recommend just checking more Pokemon. So I wish you guys very good luck with the shiny you're going to be hunting in Pokemon Go and follow for tips for one. Peace.